my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a fun video. I'm going to share with you the top 10 decks that I really want to focus on working with in 2020. So I will start with the deck that is newest to me. This is the This Might Hurt Tarot by Isabella Rotman. This is a gorgeous deck that I got just at the end of 2019 and I have yet to shuffle so we're still in order. Um, but it's just gorgeous. It's kind of a big deal on Instagram and stuff at the moment and I can see why. Um, a lot of the cards feel very Rider Waite Smith. In fact, this deck is it's very much Rider Waite Smith inspired. Um, but it's just beautiful and I love this artwork. It's really cool. And I mean, like everybody keeps talking about this like holographic gilding. It is pretty cool. Um, but this deck, I mean, I want to work with it because it's gorgeous and fun. But also because it's brand new to me and I haven't even shuffled it yet. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I don't know a lot about it other than I've just seen a, a lot online. Particularly Tom Benjamin, the video he did on it, <laughs> really sold me on the deck. I bought it um, online before I'd even finished his video. So thank you, Tom. And it's amazing. It's beautiful. And as we all know, I'm a big fan of a good Rider Waite Smith clone or inspired deck. I love my Rider Waite Smith system. And this is just a really beautifully executed one um, from what I can tell so far. I really like this four of cups. I just think it's beautiful. I really like the colours. I love the simplicity of the artwork but that it's still really expressive and I just think from everything that I've heard it's a great reader and I don't know I get that sense too and I'm looking forward to playing around with it. I think on first looking through the deck the three of wands might be my favourite. I just love it. I think it's gorgeous. Can't wait to work with it. Next is a deck that is really also very new to me too. I think I've done like two or three readings with it. It's the Tarot de Saint Croix by Lisa de Saint Croix. Fancy that. Um, this is a beautiful deck that I did actually have a couple of years ago and just couldn't, could barely even look at, let alone like touch and read and work with. Primarily because of the orange. The orange just like, I had this physical reaction to it. It's very dramatic. Um, but I don't have that reaction to the orange anymore and I'm so excited because I always loved the imagery and the artwork on this deck. So I ordered it again recently and I'm really glad I did. And this is definitely a deck I want to spend some time with. Because um, from what I know, the little that I know, the guidebook is actually quite personal. Um, and this, I mean, as you can see, the artwork, I think it is rooted in the Rider Waite Smith meanings. But the artwork's really quite unique. And the images and the scenes uh, that are depicted are really unique to this deck and specific. And um, I believe that the guidebook is quite good at um, explaining the reasons behind the changes and I really like that about a guidebook. Also I just love this artwork. I think it's beautiful. I love how colourful it is and how vibrant it is um, and I just I like that it's still Rider Waite Smith. Some of the cards look very Rider Waite Smith um, but some of them don't at all. Some of them are really um, have their own spin on the meaning of the card and I like that a lot. Deck number three is another pretty new deck to me although just like the Tarot de Saint Croix actually I did have it and then sold it and then got it back. <laughs> um, it's the Mesquite Tarot which is this cute little pocket deck that I fell in love with when I first saw it on Kasha Tarot Maps channel like a year or two ago probably longer now but this deck just did not speak to me like in terms like literally when I would read it and pull out uh, reading and the cards looked beautiful and like I knew what all the cards meant just based on you know knowing the tarot and knowing the Rider Waite Smith um, but it just didn't sing it didn't come together for me at all it just I don't know it almost felt dead or cold or just I don't know there was just not a lot happening for me with this deck and so I ended up moving it on and I think that was the right decision then um, but I've always missed the guidebook, in fact, more than anything. And I suppose I've always just regretted, like, because I love this imagery. I love the colours. And in particular, I really like the changes with the court cards. I think they're great. And I just, I love the simplicity of all of this. So I'm really glad to have the deck back because I'm really glad to have the guidebook again. I love that guidebook and I actually use it a lot more. Or I did use it um, when I had it a lot more than I used the deck. So I'm really happy to have the guidebook back. I love that. Isn't that pretty? Um, but I also do want to just, I want to give this deck another go. I really do in 2020. So I'm going to try to put out of my mind the difficulty I had the first time around and really kind of give it a fresh start and see if we can get together. And I mean, maybe we won't, maybe I'll have the same experience and 
that's okay because I'm just really glad to have the guidebook back. I love that guidebook. But I mean, if I've got the deck, I might as well give it another go, right? So I will in 2020. Okay, now let's talk about a couple of decks that I've had for ages and just haven't vibed with or spent enough time with but also haven't been able to move on when I've cleared out my collection. Uh, the first is the Little Monsters Tarot. This is the sweetest, sweetest, prettiest little deck that I just love the artwork of. <laughs> and I don't know what it is. I don't know why I've had so much trouble reading with this deck. Not trouble, like the couple of readings I've done with it have actually been quite poignant. Um, but they've just taken a lot to kind of pull the meaning out. And I just don't ever feel particularly drawn to using the deck. Like when I go to do a reading, I'm like not excited or it's not calling my name, basically. Which makes me sad because then every time I pull it out and have a look at it and I'm like, oh, maybe I should trade you. I never use you. I'm like, no, it's too cute. <laughs> so I just, I feel like 2020 needs to be the year that I make a decision on this deck. And in order to do that, I need to kind of force it to be like, are you going to work with me or not? <laughs> so I need to spend some time with this deck this year. And I do really feel like it's, it's crunch time. Are we going to get along or not? Like we need to figure out if we're going to live together or not. Um, and I don't know, maybe I'll decide that this is a deck that's worth having just because I love the look of it and not necessarily to read with. But I just feel like at the moment, after like the last year, I've kind of just been really indecisive about it. Just kind of put it back on the shelf and been like, I don't know, I'll figure it out. I'm not sure. Um, I'll keep it for now. But I haven't really taken enough action on figuring it out, you know? Um, and so that's what I want to do this year. Next, let's talk about a little Oracle deck that I mentioned in a video very recently. Um, and it is the Olam Oracle. This was sent to me by Danny Lang, who's one of my favorite YouTubers. I'm such a fangirl and I have been for so long. Um, Gosh, when did you send this to me, Danny? Like, I was gonna say a year ago, but it feels longer than that, like much longer. <laughs> um, and I finally wanna use it. <laughs> um, I know nothing about Olam, um, but uh, Danny also sent me a book to read, which, thank you, Danny. You know I'm always here for a new book. Um, so I've got all the resources I need to at least give Olam a shot to have a go and I don't know, just oh, play around. Oh, I'm showing you these upside down. Isn't that professional? So yes, I'm not sure if it's um, a system that I'm going to fall in love with, that I'm going to, you know, spend a lot of time with long term, but I am curious and I, I, I'm at the point where I think I'm ready to at least dive in and have a bit of a read of the book and have a bit of a play around. So that's certainly something I want to explore this year. Kind of along those same lines, as far as like learning a new system, another deck that I recently got is the Star Student Astrology deck. This you get on, um, was it Playmaker Cards or Making Player Cards, whatever, playing cards. One of those print on demand websites. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Because one of you kindly suggested this to me on Instagram when I expressed an interest in learning astrology. So I ordered this deck and it has kind of like the image or glyph or whatever um, on the front and then some information on the back of the card. And then we don't have a little white book but we do kind of have some additional cards that give us a bit more information about the deck and how to use it. So when I say I want to work with this deck in 2020, I don't think it's going to necessarily be the deck I work with, the sort of deck I work with in the normal sense of working with an oracle deck. Um, I think it will be in terms of working with it and learning astrology. So that's part of my plan for the year, as I shared with you in my recent um, goals for 2020 video. Um, I do like these colors, aren't they pretty? So there's kind of, it just looks very busy and a lot going on. Um, but I'm not going to be using it as an Oracle deck. It's more to help me learn. And I don't know if this will become like flashcards or just something to kind of when I'm not reading the book and I still have something to look at and learn with. I picked it too because it seemed to have like a lot of things included. I don't know all the fancy astrology names but like it had the planets and it had the signs and then it also had the houses and then it also had um, some aspect cards. So it has um, like oh in conjunct. <laughs> 
or sextile. So like it just seemed to have a lot of different things in here, which I thought um, some of them kind of more focused just on the planets and the signs. Um, others had the planets and the houses. This seemed to have a good mix of a lot of different things. Now for a deck I have had for ages, another one of them that I haven't worked with is the Gaian Tarot. Now this is the um, original Llewellyn edition, which is out of print, but the deck itself is back and available through Schiffer. I bought this on eBay. <laughs> oh gosh, it feels like a year ago, maybe. Oh, I'm so bad at like remembering specifically when I got things, but I've had it for ages, like way too long. It's still in order. And I really like this artwork. I think what's holding me back is similar to what I've done with other decks in that I suppose I've put this maybe on a bit of a pedestal. It comes with a big, large guidebook. Um, and so rather than just diving in and having some fun with it, I've been putting it off until I have time to invest in it, which I, I kind of, I get that, but also I know for myself that I've, I don't know, like this is a great example of a deck that then just gathers dust because I've put too many mental barriers in the way of just working with it and just shuffling and just playing around with it. Um, and my experience has taught me, like with the Fantastic Menagerie, um, because I didn't have a guidebook to get in the way and because I didn't allow myself to get too much in my head about it, even though I very easily could have, it became one of my favourite decks. And I just read it very intuitively and have so much fun with it. And I don't know, I'm kind of thinking I need to get out of my own way with this one and just play around with it and kind of pretend I don't have that guidebook for at least for a while, you know. Um, I did the same with the Dreams of Gaia too. And it's really pretty. And I know that this is a deck that is adored. Like it almost has a cult following, you know, the people who love it are obsessed with it. Um, and so, I don't know. Am I getting in the, my own way of having a similar experience? I don't know. Or is it that I'm just, I appreciate it, but I'm not drawn to it. I don't know, but I need to like have a go and see and figure out where I sit with this deck. I love like the detail in this. Like that water looks real, it's incredible. I mean, look at these little otters. <laughs> if that's not enough to get me into a deck, I don't know what is. Next is the Connected and Free Alchemist Oracle. This one I kind of picked up secondhand on a whim a couple of months ago, just cause I wanted to play around with it. <laughs> and I have been doing that, but I wanna do it some more. Cause I'm not really sure if it's a deck I wanna keep. Even when I bought it, um, I just, yeah, it was a whim and I wanted to play, <laughs> basically. Um, and so I want to do that a little bit more in 2020. I've already started in the last couple of months, but um, there's a little bit more room to play and explore and experiment with this deck, I think. And so basically that's what I want to do. Um, I, this was another deck that I did have. Originally I purchased it when it was first published, the first edition. This isn't. I don't know which edition this is because it's a little bit different from the one that I had. I don't really like the chakra cards being in here, but I'm still playing around with it and figuring. I also don't really like the masculine and feminine cards. Again, still playing around, but I love, like, that's beautiful. I have decided to pretty much just ignore the, the book, though, uh, because I remember when I first had this deck. That was the, one of the things that really bothered me about it. Um, it was not the book itself. The book itself is fine. Just the fact that the book and the cards and the words, like the meanings on these cards, just don't feel like they all come together. Um, they feel like they were kind of all made by different people and just put together. Um, so I'm trying to just separate them and see how I can experience this deck on its own. Cause it is beautiful. It's really stunning. Uh, so this is just a bit of a play around sort of a thing for me at the moment. And so I want to continue that this year. Deck number eight is the Amethyst Oracle. This is an Oracle deck I have had for a little while. I bought it because I fell so in love uh, with the Idiosyncra deck or Idiosyncratic Tarot last year. Last year? Last year. I think it was last year. Maybe late the year before. That's not the point. The point is that I'm obsessed with that Tarot deck, like really in love with that deck. And I bought this because it was the, it's the companion oracle and I had an opportunity to get it secondhand, which was great. Um, and so it's, it's like the same artwork, the same style. So I have played around with this a little bit, but not a huge amount. And I have found I haven't actually connected to this nearly in the same way as I have the idiosyncratic. But as we all know, I don't really like to hold on to decks unless I really connect with them, unless I feel like I'm gonna be using them 
if it's I don't have to be using them all the time but if I don't feel like they have a place um, of you know usefulness in my collection that I don't really like to hold on to them I love that card um, and I just feel like this deck it's kind of getting a bit on like the time that I've had it and I still haven't really felt it click into place with me or its place in my collection so that's something again kind of like the little monsters I want to figure out whether this is a deck for me and if it belongs with me or not I think that's a decision I kind of have to finalize <laughs> this year so that will involve spending a bit of time with it that's what we're gonna do and then deck number 10 is one I do not have to show you it is on its way to me and it is the spacious tarot by Carrie Mallon I backed it on Kickstarter last year and I am so excited about that deck it looks gorgeous I actually had kind of decided I didn't want to back decks on Kickstarter all that much anymore and then I saw it and I was like okay I kind of have to um, so it's not like I'm banned from Kickstarter I'm just a bit over Kickstarter um, but that project was really quite far along and like I followed Carrie for a long time and I just I suppose I trusted her um, and I knew like knowing that the project's pretty well done and just needs to be produced in terms of you know like the decks need to be printed and made um, that was definitely very reassuring that there wasn't you know 10 cards made and I had to wait for the rest of the deck to be created anyway before I go on a rant about Kickstarter and delays and all of that unexpected sort of stuff I'm really excited about the Spacious Tarot. I love that there was like just a couple of like a few months turnaround. I think that's amazing. And I'm so excited for it to arrive. I know some people have started to get their deck already and I'm trying not to look too much because I want to experience it for myself. But the excitement is definitely ramping up. So I can't wait to use the Spacious Tarot in 2020. So those are the top 10 decks I want to really focus on working with in 2020. Of course, I'm going to spend plenty of other times with, you know, some of my old favorites like the Sasser Ibido and the Fantastic Menagerie. And I'm sure plenty of time with the good old Brider Waite Smith. Plenty of room and time in my world for other decks. But these are just some that I really want to like intentionally work with. Um, some to figure out if they belong with me. Others because they're new and I want to play around. Some a bit of a mix of a both. Of course, I have to thank the people who have basically sponsored this video and my entire channel and everything that I do at this point. Um, that is my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much. Your support is very much appreciated by me and really does make a difference. A big extra special thank you to Tracy Timmerman, Lynette Brown and the Halers K. Thank you so much. If you have a bit of like a 2020 decks to work with list, I would love to hear about that in the comments below. I always love to hear what you guys are playing around with and I will talk to you next time. So much love. Bye.